Isaac Newton was born on January 4th, 1643, to a wealthy and prosperous farm family in Woolsthorpe, Lincolnshire. Newton, who was born prematurely, was not expected to survive. Just a mere three months after Newton was born, his father had passed. Soon after the death of his father, Newton was abandoned by his mother, who remarried and left him with his maternal grandmother. His mother went to live with her new husband, and this maternal abandonment left a large sense of insecurity and caused him to be obsessed with his works and to defend it with irrational and sometimes spiteful behavior towards his critics. After 12 years of living with his grandparents, he was reunited with his mother, whose second husband had ironically passed away as well. Although this reuniting almost stymied his contributions to the world, because she had pulled him out of the King's School in Grantham, where he had discovered his love for chemistry, she pulled him out in favor of working on the family farm. Thankfully for the world, Newton had found farming monotonous and unrewarding. He was soon placed back into the school and finished his education. Newton's intellectual ability led to the recommendation by his uncle, whose alma mater was Trinity College at Cambridge, the same school in which Newton would graduate in 1664. This was an important stepping stone in his contributions. While Newton was there, he had studied hard, spending any spare time reading and studying. Although he had studied hard, he did not graduate with honors or distinctions. Although he was granted the title of scholar, which garnered him four years of financial aid, which he would use to continue his studies. Then as he started another year at Cambridge, disease had struck the campus, causing it to be closed until further notice. It was during this 18-month hiatus from school that Newton developed the method of infinitesimal calculus, set the foundations for his theories in light and color, and gained significant information into the laws of planetary motion. This hiatus led to his first work, Principia, and according to legend, this is when Newton experienced the falling apple and had had a breakthrough in his studies of gravity. Newton continued his studies as a professor at his alma mater, where he taught a course on optics. Newton's study of optics led to the development of his reflecting telescope, which aided to prove his theory on light and color, and led him to publish Optics, a short work on reflections, refractions, and inflections, and colors of light. His work had garnered high praise among scholars, but it had its critics, most notably Robert Hooke, whose criticism sent Nit Newton into his snit, which almost caused him to quit his job at Cambridge. Hooke and Newton's constant cutthroat practice led to Newton to a nervous breakdown, causing him to almost completely withdraw himself from public life. He kept out of intellectual exchanges and only answered when it was initiated by others. During this hiatus, Newton continued his studies on gravity and its associated effects on the planets. This study eventually led to Newton writing one of the most influential works on physics. The book entitled Mathematical Principles of Natural Philosophy contained almost all the information on basic physics concepts. However, it did not contain the concept on energy. This is also contained Newton's most famous law, Newton's first law of motion, which says an object at rest will stay at rest until acted upon by an outside force. Furthermore, an object in motion will stay in motion until acted upon by an outside force. The outside force is me taking the plate away and the egg from a sitting position to a moving position. The outside force slowing it down is gravity and the water. Right, ready? One, two, three. Ah! All right. of motion, which explained nearly every other motion in the universe. These laws provided the basis for Newton to calculate the mass of planets, calculating the flattening of the Earth at its poles, and how the Earth budges at the equator, as well as the effects that the Moon and Sun have on our tides. This groundbreaking work by Newton almost was not published when once again him and Hooke started feuding over Newton's refusal to acknowledge his works. Newton and Hooke's feud lasted until Hooke's death, at which time he had declined in popularity, and had become increasingly more jealous of Newton, taking any chance he could to berate him. Hooke, knowing Newton would be elected as president of the Royal Society, waited until his own death in 1703 to finally relinquish the position. Newton's accomplishments and contributions to science were groundbreaking, and after Hooke's death went largely unchallenged. Along with attaining fame and a great achievement, Newton had gained a large amount of wealth. Newton's life, however, was largely imperfect. He never married 
or had many friends, and the few friends he had were constantly worried about his mental status due to his constant foray into peculiar topics and ideas. Newton lived out his remaining years in relative peace, defending his works and refining them. By the time he had reached 80, Newton was beginning to have health problems. Newton was experiencing digestion problems, which caused a downgrade in his mobility. And on a day in March, Newton began to experience pain in his abdomen, which caused him to black out. He never regained consciousness, and he subsequently died the next day, the 31st of March, 1727, at the ripe age of 85. Newton's popularity continued to grow posthumously, and his theories became ever more popular, and his contributions known ever more, thus permanently placing him in history as one of the most brilliant and significant scientists the world has ever seen.